Hi folks, so um, a brief point to make really about half sorting. So um, there are a few videos up on, on YouTube and elsewhere um, regarding half sorting and the point that uh, lots of people make is that half sorting, i.e. gripping the sword in the middle of your blade, um, is to use your um, sword, your long sword in this case, but it could be a one-handed sword and is sometimes shown as uh, done with a one-handed sword, uh, to use it as a giant crowbar or lever. Now this is one use of half sorting. However, the point that I want to make is it is not the primary use of half sorting. The primary use of half sorting is to assist the use of the point, putting the point into your opponent. Okay? Now, um, half sorting is largely shown in medieval art done against armoured opponents, okay? As uh, most of you will hopefully know by now from watching my other videos and other people's videos, um, cutting in a conventional manner with a long sword against um, 15th century or late 14th century plate armour is essentially pointless. You can um, perhaps um, knock someone slightly, you might even hurt them slightly, but you're never going to kill someone uh, just by hitting them with the edge of your sword uh, if they're wearing complete plate armour. Because complete plate armour, surprise surprise, works very well against swords. That's what it was designed for. Okay, So, we are left with the use of the point. And the point wants to go in the gaps. Okay, um, And the gaps are, there are many gaps in, in plate armour. They can be in the armpit, in the inside of the elbow, behind the gauntlet, up under the crotch, the back of the knee, sometimes certain openings around the helmet, obviously if there's an open face helmet then in the face, uh, if you have vision slits in there, sometimes the gorget or the, the, the neck defence attached to the helmet has gaps that you can get up and under, sometimes the back of the helmet is shown, um, so there are various places that you can get the point of a weapon and that point could be a dagger, a spear, a sword, a warhammer, anything, okay? Um, and clearly if you can bypass the armour there might be mail in that gap, for example in the armpit you have uh, mail, i.e. chainmail voiders uh, protecting the armpit, however you can get a point, especially a narrow point, far enough through the mail or sometimes burst a link of the mail to get the point in uh, such that you'll still be able to quite badly wound the person. And uh, even a, you know one or two inches of point and that much point of this longsword will go straight through a mail link without having to burst any of the links. Uh, that much point in your armpit will be both extremely uncomfortable and debilitating because it will cause a, ble a bleeding wound that may possibly cause a puncture in your lung as well. Okay, so um, getting points into gaps is really the main purpose of half sorting. Okay, now why would you half sword to get the point in? Well, admittedly, you can get the point uh, into gaps fighting in armour when using the sword conventionally, uh, holding it by the back end. Okay, and this is shown in art and it is shown in fencing treatises. Okay, um, however, half sorting has a couple of very important advantages to getting the point into gaps in armour. The first of those is accuracy. When you hold your sword halfway up the blade, you've now got your hands further apart, i.e. you've got more leverage, more strength behind the weapon to resist and so on. Uh, but also you can be a lot more accurate with the point and your point is less likely to be diverted or pushed aside uh, by either accidentally or by deliberately the other person pushing or parrying the point aside. You can get the point very accurately into small holes. Um, with full complete plate armour we are talking about small gaps and small holes between plates. Okay. Uh, so accuracy is very important and as anybody who does a, a combat sport or a martial art knows being accurate whilst trying to fight and whilst someone is trying to hit you at the same time or put you on the floor is very difficult. So anything that can aid your accuracy is good. The second point is to do with stiffness. So um, underneath um, place armour you wear uh, either a male shirt or um, male attached to, to voiders i.e. just filling the gaps where the plate isn't and underneath that you have a jacket usually made of um, at least a few layers of, um, of linen. Um, now um, the jacket is not necessarily padded because under full plate armour you don't want um, you don't really need extra padding because the, the plate armour does its job very well uh, and additionally uh, padding is very hot and plate armour is hot 
Um, so you don't want to overheat, and overheating was a big problem in armour, and still is a big problem for those of us who wear armour. Um, so in actual fact, you wouldn't have a, a huge amount of padding underneath there. However, you still require a certain degree of stiffness in your weapon to get your point through and into um, that gap and through what's inside that gap. Okay, so you need accuracy first to get it in there, and once it's in there, you need uh, pushing force. Now, one of the problems with um, thrusting with swords is I'm going to switch swords because this is a very, a deliberately very stiff blade. Okay, uh, this type of sword, this very pointed sort of Type 15 or perhaps Type 18, as according to you at Oakshot's typology sword, is designed to give very stiff thrusts. It's not fantastic at cutting. You can cut better with a falchion or a sabre or certain types of broader sword, um, but it is very stiff for thrusting, and that's what these were designed for, for this reason that I'm explaining, to get through the gaps in armour and then get through what's in the gap. So I'll switch swords to a sword that is more flexible to demonstrate this point. So if I am thrusting into something resistive, okay, and something resists this point, the blade flexes. Okay, it flexes because it's a spring. Now, if we think that all of the force is contacting with the point here and the whole blade flexes, all of that force is now going sideways and not going through the target, which is what I want it to do. And in actual fact, in the 19th century, there were problems where people wore uh, thick military jackets and sometimes great coats over them, and there are accounts of uh, blades not being able to penetrate through the padded clothing simply because of the resistance of it and the blade flexing. Okay, so they tried to make the blade stiffer. So, a way of making your blade stiffer in real terms is to hold it in the middle. Okay, because what you've done now is you've taken this length of steel, okay, that is this uh, the ratio of the width according to the length, and you're now uh, essentially doubling the thickness of the blade by holding it here because now the only part of the blade you have to worry about flexing is in front of your hand okay because the part between your hands is gonna stay rigid so I hope I've explained that clearly enough the um, so the two reasons really for um, thrusting in half sword are for accuracy and for stiffness i.e. penetrating power um, and I want to reiterate again that whilst half sorting, and I'll switch back to the long sword, whilst half sorting, um, you do use it for close in grappling techniques, and it is shown in lots of uh, treatises and lots of art being used like this, using both the, the guard and the pommel and the hilt and the different parts of the blade you're now, now holding, using it like a mini pole weapon. However, the vast majority of medieval art that shows half-sorting shows it being used to apply the point. And in my opinion, and I think all of the evidence supports this, the primary reason for half-sorting is to apply the point both more accurately and with greater penetrative force. It is not primarily to use as a grappling lever device. That is the secondary purpose of half-sorting. Okay, the primary purpose is to turn your sword into a short spear. Thank you.